In this chapter, we will be studying the transformations of functions. In this lesson, we will be looking at horizontal and vertical stretches. So a lot of what we see in this chapter here is what happens when we make certain changes to function notation, okay? Now, when we talked about translations, what we were doing is we were adding values to the independent variable inside the function, or we were adding values to the dependent variable outside the function, and we talked about what that did. In the last lesson, we were talking about what happens if you make these things negative, okay? Now we're going to look at what happens if you multiply the function, okay, the entire dependent variable, by a, a value, the a there outside. Or what if you multiply the independent variable by a constant? What does that do? And the answer is, in this particular case here, is that this causes a stretch, okay, or a dilatation there. But what it's going to do here is it's going to change the, the shape of its graph. It's not going to change the orientation. It's not going to, it, it can change the position. And we'll, we'll talk about that in just a little bit here. It can actually change the position of a graph, but it depends on, on how you start here. Now, it's not going to change a, a quadratic into something other than a quadratic. It's not going to change a cubic into something other than a cubic. What it'll do is it'll just change the way that quadratic looks. Okay, it'll change the way the, the uh, cubic looks or whatever graph you're looking at here. So when we say it stretches the graph or changes the shape of the graph, um, you got to understand it's not changing the graph, just, just the way it looks. Now there are two types. We've got a vertical stretch. And what we're going to do here is we, we stretch something vertically about the x-axis. Now, I know, again, we associate the word vertical with the y-axis. So let's just talk about what that means here. If we stretch something vertically, let's say that you've got this little guy right here sitting on this the uh, x-axis like this. If I stretch this by a factor of 2, let's say this goes uh, from negative 1 up to 1. If I stretch this by a factor of 2, what's going to happen here is this top part here, it's going to get twice as big. But the x-axis is the center of that motion. So what happens here is this goes up to 2, this goes down to negative 2. So now this thing is, is twice as big, okay? So the motion here, the top and the bottom of that thing moved away from the x-axis. Okay, that's a vertical change, okay? Um, so therefore, the very points are on the x-axis. Basically, anything that sat on that x-axis would stay exactly where it was. So the stretch causes all the y-coordinates, the y-coordinates, to be multiplied by a factor of a. Now, let's take a look at the, the different parts of the transformation that we've seen before here. So we take the original function y equals f of x, and then in this function, we're going to replace y with 1 over a y. And that's kind of an odd thing to do here, but you'll see why we do that in a second here. So when I take and make that replacement into the function, so I no longer write the, the y there, I write 1 over a y. This is significant because now I ask myself, well, what do I got to do to get y by itself? Well, to get y by itself in this particular uh, function here, I have to multiply by a. So that's what this is, okay? This is a, a vertical stretch, if you will, by a factor of a. I am multiplying by a, okay? So all of the y-coordinates, then you're going to see that over here, all of the y-coordinates get multiplied by that a. Now, we can, we can further analyze the, the invariant points here. Just take a look at this. We set the invariant points to show up on the, uh, the x-axis, I should say. Well, what is the y-coordinate for any point on the x-axis? Well, zero. So what's a times zero? Zero. So you can see right there that that point would stay invariant. Oops, sorry about that. There we, the, yeah, it's done, good. Okay, now let's take a quick look at a horizontal stretch. Okay, we're going to stretch this thing about the y-axis, and I, I think that probably makes a fair bit of sense there, uh, how this would look. Okay, same sort of thing if we put the little block right there. If you stretch that by a factor of 2, the sides are going to move away from the, the uh, y-axis. Now, I'm going to come back and take a look at, at this sort of a model here again in just a second. The invariant points are going to be on the y-axis, and we're going to cause, we're going to stretch all of the x-coordinates uh, and to do that, we're going to multiply in the function by a factor of 1 over b. Now, let's take a quick look at this at the different pieces. I start with y equals f of x, and I'm going to replace x with bx in the function. Okay, so there it is right there. Okay, y is equal to f of bx. Now, think about this. What would I have to do to get x by itself right here, to figure out what x the new x is? Well, I have to divide by b. So this is a horizontal stretch by a factor 
of 1 over b. Okay, right here. So if I actually wanted this to be uh, a stretch by a factor of b, this would have to be 1 over b in there. I'd have to reciprocate that because every time I try to find x, I'm going to have to take that coefficient there and reciprocate it okay, when I bring it over to the other side here. So this is always the reciprocal of that stretch. And you can see that over here in the point. What that means here is I'm multiplying the x by 1 over b. Okay, now before we go on and do some examples here, I want to take a quick look at, at uh, a little example. I'm going to kind of zoom in on this. Whoops, sorry, the other way. I'm going to zoom in on this. Just notice what happens here. We, we, I've just been saying here that, uh, that a horizontal stretch is about the y-axis here. Now just watch this. Let's say I take a point, or not a point, let's say a block. That's probably a little bit easier here. A block that's not on the y-axis. Let's say it's moved off a little bit. If I stretch this by a factor of 2, I want you to know what happens here. Okay, I'm gonna, this is going to be a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. Now what happens here is I take the left hand side of this box, which is that positive 1. Actually, you know what, I'm going to stretch it by a factor of 3. That's right. If I do it by a factor of 2, I'm going to have some overlap here, and I don't want that. I want to stretch it by a factor of 3. So I'm going to take the, the left hand side of that box, which is oh, x coordinate of 1, I'm going to multiply that by 3. So this side is going to go here. This side right here at 2, when I multiply that by a factor of 3, is going to go out to 6 here. So 4, 5, six, it's going to go out to here. So here's, here's this new rectangle here. Three times as big as this one, but notice what happened here. This moved out to here, this side moved out to here. It's moving away from the y-axis. But notice that it also kind of looked like it, it moved the position. It's not like this thing just got bigger, okay, out on both sides here. Both sides moved to the right, just that the, the right-hand side moved out, if you want to think of it this way, faster, okay? So this is something that's going to have to be addressed in a, in a later lesson, okay, how this, this stretch can cause something that looks like there's also a translation going on here. But for the time being, remember that when you see this bx inside the function, that refers to a stretch by a factor of 1 over bx. If you see the a f of x in the function, that is simply a stretch by a factor of a. For the graph of y equals f of x, describe the effect of making the following replacement or replacements described and give the new function. Okay, so we're just going to take a quick look at all of these real fast here. If I replace x with 3x in a function, so I'm going to get y is equal to f of uh, 3x. Okay. Think, what would I have to do to get x by itself? Well, I'd have to divide that by 3. So there it is. This is a horizontal stretch by a factor of one third, okay, over here. If I replace x with one quarter x, what that means is inside my function, instead of putting x, I'm going to put one quarter x. Now let's think about this. What would I have to do here to get x all by itself? Well, I would have to multiply by four. So this is a horizontal stretch by a factor of four, okay? Over here, I'm going to replace y with 4y in my function. This, is, this becomes 4y equals f of x. Now, notice that the y is not by itself. No, normally it is, okay? Normally what we would do is we would, we would simply write this like this. We would get the y by itself by dividing by that coefficient. And, but right there, I've just told you what the stretch is. This is a vertical stretch by a factor of one quarter. Come down here. Now we got a couple things going on here. I'm replacing y with one fifth y. So this will be one fifth y is equal to f of, and I'm replacing x with one half x. So this is a vertical stretch by a factor of, now to get y by itself, I'd have to multiply by five. So this is going to be by a factor of five. To get x by itself, okay, so it's going to be a horizontal stretch by a factor of, to get x by itself, I'd have to multiply by 2. So it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. Okay, if I replace y with negative y, okay, so this is going to look like this. It'll be negative y equals f of x. 
and then I'm going to replace y here with 2y. So it's going to be negative 2y equals f of x. Okay, well there's a couple of things going on here. First of all, that negative in front refers to a vertical reflection okay, over the x-axis. And then the 2y there, think about what would I have to do to get y by itself? I have to divide by 2, so this is a vertical stretch by a factor of 1 half. And then finally over here, a very similar sort of question. So first of all, I'm going to replace x with negative x. And I really do suggest that you do these one, one at a time here. And this becomes negative 1 half x. Okay. Now, again, notice the negative in front here. Uh, that is going to be a horizontal reflection over the y-axis. And then to get x by itself, I'd have to multiply by 2. So this is a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. Those are the transformations that I'm seeing in all of those questions. Describe how the graphs of the following can be obtained from the graph of y equals f of x, then give the correct replacement notation and mapping notation. Okay, so the, let's take a look at this first one here. g of x is equal to 3f of x. Okay, notice that really the y coordinate here, because this is what f of a g of x is. y is isolated, so I've already brought that stretch over. So, and what am I doing? I'm multiplying the function by 3. So this is a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. Now, if I want to know what the replacement is, take that stretch back to the y. Okay, how would I get that back to the y? Well, I would divide. Okay? So if you, if you divide it here, you'd get y over 3 equals f of x. So this is what I did to the function. I took the y and I replaced it with 1 third y. Now, <clears throat> what is the mapping? Now remember, okay, the replacement, the replacement identifies what has happened in the function. But mapping tells you what is actually happening on the graph. And that's when you describe the transformations, that's what you're describing here. So in this particular case here, what this means is my point x comma y is going to become the point uh, x comma 3y. Okay, this is what's actually happening on the point. Now, let's take a quick look at this next one here. Again, notice what I've done here. Uh, there's a 5x in, uh, inside the function here. Now, to isolate that x, what I would do is divide by 5. So this is a horizontal, uh, I was going to say horizontal translation there. I don't know why. Horizontal stretch by a factor okay, of one-fifth. Okay? Now, look at what happened here. Inside that function, where there should be an x, there's a 5x, which means what I did is I replaced the x with a 5x in the function. But the, my mapping is going to reflect what I'm seeing as the transformation. So the mapping suggests that the point x comma y is going to become the point one-fifth x comma y. Because the mapping is going to illustrate the stretch that I'm, that I'm seeing. And over here, okay, again, notice that this is inside the function. So again, this is horizontal. This is going to be a horizontal stretch by a factor of, well, in this case, what would I have to do to get the, the x by itself? I'd have to multiply by 2. So this is by a factor of 2. But I can see quite clearly that in the function, where there was supposed to be an x, there's a 1 half x. So x has been replaced with 1 half x. And again, my mapping is going to reflect what I'm actually seeing by way of transformation. So x comma y is going to be a stretch, horizontal stretch by a factor of 2 means multiplying x by 2. So 2x comma y. Whoops, sorry, you can't see that. And there you go. Those are the, those are the, the in fact, really what this is about here, this question is about the relationship between these. Okay, the replacement really mimics what's going on with the function. The transformation really is about what's going on with the point. Write the equation of y equals f of x after applying the following transformations. Okay, so this question is again about the relationship between the, the different ways that we can address these transformations. So now a vertical stretch about the x-axis by a factor of 3. Let's talk about what we're doing here. Okay. Uh, that means my image point is looking like this. Now this is a vertical stretch, so it's the y coordinate that's changing. And it means I'm multiplying the y coordinate by 3. Now, in my function, that means I replaced the y with 1 third y. 
Okay, because remember, to get the y by itself, I would then multiply by 3 to bring that over. And that's what I'm seeing in the point here. So my function would look like this. 1 third y is equal to f of x. Okay, well now, I, I don't typically leave it like this. So normally what I would do in a situation like this where it's a vertical transformation, I'm going to bring that over to the other side and make this y equals 3 f of x. Okay, now let's take a look at this next one. A horizontal stretch about the y-axis by a factor of two-thirds. Now, what that means is my image point has done this. It's, that's exactly what, okay, it's exactly what the description says. Two-thirds x comma y. Now, what that means though is that in the function, I replaced x with three-halves x. Now, just think about that. If that was in the function, what would I have to do to get x by itself? Well, I'd have to multiply by two-thirds, which is the the factor that I'm describing in this problem. So this means now in my function, this is f of 3 halves x. And you know what? There's not much more to do. I would just leave it like that because we don't typically solve for x. That's as, that's as good as we get here. And this last one in this, this question here says a reflection in the y-axis. Okay, now a reflection in the y-axis, we've got to think about what's going on there. Followed by a vertical stretch about the x-axis by a factor of one-fifth. Okay. So this means that my point, a reflection in the y-axis means that I've got this negative x there, followed by a vertical stretch about the x-axis by a factor of one-fifth. Uh, so that means I'm multiplying the y-coordinate by one-fifth. Now let's just talk about what these replacements indicate, or sorry, what these, this point here indicates by way of replacement. Well, the reflection is easy. Okay, ah, that reflection's easy, because if a negative shows up here, that just means I replaced x with a negative x. Love that. Uh, vertically, though, what I'm seeing here is if, if I'm getting a vertical stretch by a factor of one-fifth, y, that means I must have replaced y in the function with 5y. Okay, now think, what would my stretch be? How would I get a y by itself? Well, I would divide by 5. So my function is going to look like this. Okay, it'll be 5y is equal to f of negative x which is great, which is true, but I don't normally leave it like that. Normally what I would do is I would get the y by itself, so I would divide by, by the 5. This will become 1 fifth f of negative x. That's what I'm looking for. Given the function f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 1 minus 4, write the equation of the transform function if f of x is stretched vertically about the x-axis by a factor of 1 third. Okay, this is a good question, and the reason I say that is because I am going to apply a, a stretch here okay, to a function that has already been transformed by some translations here. So I got to be really careful with this. This is a question about, about your understanding of how these things work, okay? particularly how function notation works. So I'm going to stretch this thing okay, vertically by about the x-axis by a factor of one-third. Now that means I am going to replace the y okay, with a 3y. Now think about what this does. Okay, this, this gets, tells me that if I was to isolate the y, I'd have to divide by 3. There's my stretch factor, the 1 third. So that's, that's how I'm getting that, that stretch factor out of that. My mapping. Well, I'm going to take any point on the original function, okay, and this is going to become x comma 1 third y. Now, Notice that I'm not incorporating the translations here, okay? And I'm not incorporating the, uh, incorporating the translations because those are from the original function, okay? The original function already had those on there. The, those are not the result of this transformation that I'm now applying, okay? For all I know, those, that is what the original function looks like, okay? Uh, that's what I'm comparing it to. So when you compare this function to the one that I'm creating, this is the only change that's occurred. Now, here's where the fun begins. Let's look at the equation. So we're going we're to do exactly what this replacement says. I'm going to replace. So I've got this, this y equals f of x. Now, I'm going to be really slow and deliberate by the, on this here. I'm going to replace y with 3y. Okay? Now, I'm going to get y by itself by dividing by that 3. So this is going to be y is equal to 1 third f of x. And I'm going to be really deliberate about this. This is one-third of f of x. Now, what's f of x? Well, f of x is the absolute value of x minus 1 minus 4. It's those two parts. 
Don't just put the one third in front of the absolute value. That is incorrect because this is one third of this whole function. So x minus one, absolute value, minus four. And I'm writing it kind of small there because I want you to realize that this one third okay, is, is distributed to everything here. So my answer is going to be that y is equal to one third the absolute value of x minus one and then one-third of that negative four, so that becomes negative four-thirds. This is the function that we're looking for. Given the function f of x equals the absolute value of x minus one minus four, write the equation of the transformed function if f of x is stretched horizontally about the y-axis by a factor of two. Okay, now here's another one, similar to the one that we just did here. And again, really good questions because I'm asking you to do transformation on something that has got transformations in it. So it's a little bit more complicated and really, really what we're testing here is how comfortable you are with function notation. So it's a horizontal stretch about the y-axis by a factor of two. So my replacement here, okay, since it's a horizontal stretch here, I'm going to replace x with, well, I want it to be by a factor of two. So I'm going to have to replace x with one half x, okay? Because now think, what would I have to do to get x by itself? Well, I'd have to multiply by 2. Okay, good. So now, my mapping is going to be, well, I want this to be by a factor of 2. So it's going to be 2x comma y. Okay? So there's my, my image point. It reflects exactly the transformation I'm seeing. And again, I'll say it again. I'm not incorporating these little translations that I'm seeing here because these are part of the original function. This right here, this stretch, that's the trans, uh, transformation that I'm dealing with now. So this is the only significant change that's being applied. Now, here's the, here's the goofy part here. This is the, the tough part. And this is what the part that I'm going to take kind of slow here. We start with y equals f of x, and it becomes y equals f of 1 half x. Now, the fact that we're plugging this in, that fraction there, that fraction is going to cause problems. I mean, and we know it. Okay, we know it here. But let's just take a look at what this means here. This means that anywhere where I saw an x in the function, I'm now going to put an f, uh, sorry, a one-half x. So this means this is going to be the absolute value of one-half x minus one minus four. Now, one of the things that we're going to do here, and you're going to have to get used to, is we would never leave it like this. Okay, we would never, ever leave it like this. And the, the reason for that is um, this now becomes confusing because right now this looks like a vertical stretch by a factor of two, and a, sorry, vertical stretch, a horizontal stretch by a factor of two, and a horizontal translation one to the right. But that's no longer true because remember what I said earlier about a stretch, a stretch can move something, particularly if it's not on an axis. Okay, well this, this function, because of the translations in it, has been moved away from that axis. So what I got to do here, and you'll get used to this here, I'm going to factor that one half out. Okay, so I'm just going to factor it out of this binomial. So one half x, now what would this be here? Well, if you take one, negative one, divided by a half here, you're going to get two. And so this is the function that we're really looking for here. And I can see now that the, the result is a function that looks like it's had a horizontal stretch by a factor of two, but it looks like it's been translated, in fact, two to the uh, right, not that one to the right. I think I said left earlier. Okay, if I did say left earlier, that was crazy talk. That's, that's right, okay? Anyway, this is the function that we're looking for. Okay, this is, this is as far as we want you to take it. We're always going to expect you to, to factor out that, that coefficient. If the original point, 12, negative five, is on the graph of y equals f of x, determine the coordinates of its image under the following transformations. Okay, well, these questions here become actually relatively quick once you've identified the image point here. So let's take a quick look at this first one. There's a negative in front. Okay, so this is a reflection here. It's a negative in front of the function, so it's a, ref it's a vertical reflection, which means the y coordinate is changing signs. So our point, 12 comma negative five, will become the point 12 comma positive 5. And that's the only thing that happens here. Over here, x comma y is going to become the point, well, what's going on here? 
There's a negative in front of the x, so that means that the x is changing signs. And now there's a 4 in front of the x. Now, let's think about that. What, that's a stretch for sure. What kind of stretch? Well, what would I do to get the x by itself? Yeah, I'd well, divide by 4. So this is a horizontal stretch by a factor of a quarter. And then there has been no vertical transformation there. So again, we take our point, 12 comma negative 5, and it becomes the point, well, negative 1 quarter of 12 will be negative 3, okay? Oh, sorry, I don't know why I put the x in there. It'll be negative 3 comma, and there's been no change in the, the y coordinate, so negative 5. Over here, so our last one here, x comma y is going to become, well, let's take a look. Well, first of all, that 2 in the front, because it's in front of the function, that's a vertical stretch. Because the y has already been isolated, I can tell right now that it must have been because I multiplied by 2. So my y coordinate is going to be 2y. Look inside the function. This is responsible for a, a horizontal stretch. What's the stretch factor? Well, what would I do to get x by itself? I'd multiply by 3. So this is going to be 3x. And so now I take that point, 12, negative 5. Multiply the 12 by 3, there's my 36. Multiply the negative 5 by 2, and I get negative 10. So that's the transform point that I'm looking for. Given the graph of y equals f of x, sketch the graph of g of x and fill in the blanks given that g of x is 2f of x. Okay, well, there's a lot to do in this question, so let's just jump right in. So we're starting with y equals f of x, and we're, we're given the graph right here on the right. And we'll get to that in a second. Um, we're supposed to identify what this transformation is. Well, there's a 2 in front of the function, which means that's vertical. We're multiplying by 2. So this is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Now, before I discuss the domain and the range and blah, 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 let's go down here and talk about the, the mapping. So what that means here is uh, because it's a vertical stretch by a factor of 2, that means I'm multiplying my y coordinates by 2. Now. The very first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to come over here. We're, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's multiply uh, these y coordinates by 2. Now, let's just take a quick look here. Now, notice that the, the x coordinate is not going to change here. So this is the point negative 6, 4 is going to become the point negative 6, 8. Okay, it's going to go right up at the top there. This point here, negative 2, 0, well, the y coordinate is 0 times 2 is still 0. That actually stays there. That goes nowhere. So that's an invariant point. Uh, the, this point right here, 0, 2, okay, the y coordinate is 2, so it's going to become 0, 4. 2, 0, the y coordinate is 0, multiplied by 2 is 0. So again, there's another invariant point. And then over here, similar to the one on the other side here, this is the point 6, 4. Uh, multiply the y coordinate by 2, we're going to get 6, 8. So then this thing, oh, that was terrible. Oh, did you see how I curved that? What was I thinking? Okay. I just want that to go straight. Oh, that's well, you get the idea. I am not going to keep doing this. There you go. Perfect. Oh, beautiful. Thing of beauty. So that's what this, this function is going to look like. Okay? It's vertically stretched by a factor of 2. Now, we already saw the invariant points. The invariant points occurred at negative 2, 0, and 2, 0, okay? where the y coordinates were equal to 0. Now we can go back and talk about the domain and range. Now, this was a vertical stretch. My domain for the original was negative 6 less than or equal to x is less than or equal to positive 6. Now, because this was a vertical transformation, that actually didn't change at all. Okay? However, the range will change in this particular case because it was limited. The, the lowest value that this gets to is 0. The highest value the original got to was 4. And now what you do is you just multiply those two endpoints uh, by 2. But 0 times 2 is still 0, so that's going to be 0 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 8 in this case. Okay, now that's all the information that we're looking for in this particular question. Given the graph of y equals f of x, sketch the graph of g of x and fill in the blanks given that g of x is equal to f of negative 2x. Okay, so now in this case, we are looking at uh, the same graph as the, the previous one here, but our transformation is a little different. So notice what's going on here. I've got a negative in front, okay? And now this is within the function though, so this is gonna be a horizontal reflection. And then I've got a two in front of the x. Now if I try to get the x by itself, I have to divide by two. So this is gonna be a horizontal stretch 
by a factor of a half. Okay, now, like we did before, let's go down to our image point right away here, because what this means is I'm going to get negative one half x, and nothing's going to change vertically. Okay, nothing's going to change vertically. So now, I'm going to come over to my points here. This point, for example, is going to stay at four, but now it's going to go, it's got a, a y, sorry, an x corner here of negative six. So negative one half of six is going to be positive three. So this point is going to jump over to here. Okay, this point right here, it's got an, uh, an x coordinate of negative two. Negative one half of two is positive one, so it's going to go to here. Now this one right here, because its x coordinate is zero, yeah, negative one half of zero, zero. It stays right there. That's the invariant point right there. Uh, this point here at two, zero is going to, the two is going to be multiplied by negative one half, so it's going to put this at negative one. And then this six over here, positive six, multiplied by negative one half will become negative three. But again, it doesn't change vertically. So it's going to come over uh, to here, sorry, negative three. And so now I connect the dots. A little easier to do this time. And there's the function. Now it's a little bad right there, but you get the idea. Now, my domain, when I come over here, my domain has in fact changed because my original one was negative six out to six. Now what's happened here is there's been a, a stretch, a horizontal stretch, and then these things have been flipped. So my new minimum is now, okay, when I multiply these two end values here by negative one half, I'm going to get negative uh, three as my low value and positive three as my high value, okay? Now my range, my range didn't change. My original range was between zero and four because both of the transformations here are, are horizontal. That didn't affect anything, so my range stays the same. And as I was going through and plotting those points, I noted the invariant point. In this case, it was the point zero comma two because when you multiply negative one half by zero, it stays the same. So there's my graph right there, and those are the properties that we're looking for. Given the graph of y equals f of x, sketch the graph of g of x and fill in the blanks, given that g of x is equal to 5 f of 3x. Okay, so this question's a little different than the previous ones because the graph we're looking at is a little different. Eh, it's not such a big deal. Let's take a quick look at what we got here in terms of functions. Uh, we got a couple of things going on here. First of all, I got the 5 out front. Now that represents, a, remember, a vertical stretch. And because the y is already isolated, it looks like I multiplied by five. So this is a vertical stretch by a factor. Whoops, so I don't know why I'm writing it like that. By a factor of five. Inside the function, there's a three multiplied by the x. To get that x by itself, I'd have to divide by three. So this is a horizontal stretch by a factor of one third. Now, just like I did before, I'm gonna go down to my my mapping here, this means I am multiplying the x coordinate by one third and I am multiplying the y coordinate by five. So let's go take a look at my points and bear this in mind here, okay? Now, zero, zero, if I multiply zero by one third, multiply zero by five, stays zero, zero. That point stays invariant, okay? Over here, this had, uh, this is the point three comma one well, one third of three is one, so it's gonna to drop to here. And then the y coordinate one multiplied by five is gonna put that up to here. Okay, so it, there's this horizontal stretch pulls it in this way, and then the vertical stretch pushes it away this way, okay? This point right here at, at six, a third of six is two, so this point comes down to here. And then the y coordinate is zero, zero times five, well that's just zero, that stayed, that didn't move vertically. However, it did move here. This point right over here at nine, comma, negative one, a third of nine is gonna be three, comes right to here, and then one multiplied by five is gonna put us at, no, sorry, negative one multiplied by five will put us at negative five, so that point jumps to there. And then we got this one last point here at 12 comma zero, well a third of 12 is four, and then the y coordinate was zero multiplied by five is just zero, so it stays right there. So this graph is gonna look like, ah, that was terrible. Oh. That's a little better. Okay, so that's what my new graph looks like. 
Now, immediately I can tell you that my invariant point was the point zero, zero. That point did not change due to those two transformations. Now, but all the rest of this kind of did here. So let's take a look at the original bits of information. My domain was from zero out to 12, and my range was from negative one out to one. Now, the vertical stretch will not affect the domain, but the horizontal one will. So I'm going to multiply both of those values by a third. A third of zero is zero. A third of 12 is four. So my new domain is going to go from zero out to four. A horizontal stretch won't affect the range, but a vertical stretch will. So I'm going to multiply both of those by, by five. So I'm going to, the, my new range is going to go from negative five out to positive five. So here we go. There's my new graph. And those are the properties that they're asking me to find. The domain of f of x is the set of x values from negative 4 to 8, and the range is the set of y values from negative 6 to 12. Determine the domain and range of g of x if g of x is equal to 1 third f of 1 half x. Okay, well this question really is about just identifying how the stretches are affecting the domain and range here. So let's identify what the stretches are first. So in this function right here, I've got y is equal to 1 third f of 1 half x. Now that 1 third being outside the front of the function, that's my vertical stretch. Notice that the y, the g of x, is isolated, so I, I have divided through by that 3. So there's been a vertical stretch by a factor, okay, of 1 third. Inside is where my horizontal uh, transformations occur. Think about what I would have to do to get x by itself. I'd have to multiply by 2. So this is a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. So my x comma y becomes 2x comma 1 third y. Now this is giving me an indication of what to do with these pieces up here. Okay, so my new domain, okay, my new domain is going to be the set of x values. Now I know my vertical stretch won't affect it, but my horizontal one will. I'm going to multiply the endpoints here by that 2. So this will become negative 8 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 16 where x is an element of the reals. Okay, my range, I know that my horizontal stretch won't affect it, but my vertical one will. So I'm going to multiply the endpoints of my range by my, my, sorry, my vertical stretch. So a third of negative 6 is negative 2. A third of 12 is 4. And so there's my new domain and there's my new range. The graph of the function y equals f of x has been transformed by either a stretch or a reflection. Write the equation of the transformed graph g of x. Okay, so to understand this question, we really got to look at, at how these two functions relate to each other. Now remembering, this is our starting point here. Okay, so g of x is going to represent some transformation of f of x. Now we're already told in the question that this is either a stretch or a reflection here. Now, I think it should be clear that there has been a reflection, okay? Because uh, the orientation of this graph has changed completely. So there has been a reflection over the y-axis, which means x has changed to negative x. So actually, I'm going to do it like that. I'm going to write out the replacements here. So my x has been replaced with negative x. That's what that means here. Now, take a look at this. The shape of this has changed as well. Now, not the overall shape. That's still the same here, but notice now notice it's as tall, the original is as tall as the transform one, so there's been no vertical stretch. But notice that the original one here is three blocks wide, whereas this one is one, two, three, four, five, six blocks wide. So this has been horizontally stretched by a factor of, of two. Now that actually makes perfect sense here because if I was to reflect this thing first, this point would drop to here. And then the horizontal stretch moves it away out to here. So actually, it is just these two transformations here. And a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2 means I'm replacing x with 1 half x. So my g of x is going to be f of, I'll put the negative in there, and then I'll put the 1 half, and there's my new function. g of x is equal to negative 1 half x. The graph of the function y equals f of x has been transformed by either a stretch or a reflection. Write the equation of the transformed graph g of x. All right, let's take a quick look at this one here. Now we know 
that th what transformed the f of x, which is this one down here, into g of x is either a stretch and or a reflection. Now, there might have been a horizontal reflection here, but I would never be able to tell the difference, so I'm just going to assume that there wasn't, okay? Um, there has obviously not been a vertical reflection, so it kind of cancels those out here. So uh, the only th thing that might have happened, well, okay, there's, there's two ways of looking at this. Now notice that the, sh the overall shape is the same, uh, but it has changed a bit. So for example, the new function is quite a bit narrower. Now there are two ways of thinking about this. One way I can do this is to take a quick look at, like to get some key points here and just compare them. So for example, let's, let's take this one right here. Let's assume right now that what I'm seeing is just a vertical stretch. So this point right here, which is one over one up, has now become the point, and I'm going to assume it's this one, one over three up. So because the horizontal change is the same, but the vertical change is different, it goes from one to three, I can assume that this was a, uh, well, we'll do it over here, a vertical stretch by a factor of three. Now, a vertical stretch by a factor of three means I'm going to replace y with one-third y, and so g of x, okay, I put the three, the bring the three down, this will be one-third of that, then I'll bring the three over to make this f of x, three times f of x, or three times the absolute value of x. Now that's one way I could do that. Another way that I could do that is to, is to take not those two points, but like a, another comparable point here. Let's say for example I took this one because it's going through that nice point there. What is that? Whatever. Oh, I got to check the units here. Well, no, it, it doesn't really matter because the, the, the block here, all of my units are the same as long as my scales are the same. I'm sorry, I didn't notice the scale here. But my scales are the same, so that doesn't really matter here. So this point over here is at six. This point drops down to two. So I could also think of this as a horizontal stretch by a factor of a half, okay? Now, think about what that means. I'm gonna replace, that means x, with two x inside the function. So another way of thinking about this is this could be g of x is equal to f of two x, which is just the absolute value of two x. That's another way that I could come up with this. Now, which one do they in intend here? Hard to say. Um, in fact, there, there may be other combinations of, of like vertical and horizontal stretches together that'll get you the same results here, but uh, these are probably the two most obvious ways that people will approach this problem. So one of those is what they're really looking for here. The graph of the function y equals f of x has been transformed by either a stretch or a reflection. Write the equation of the transformed graph g of x. All right, let's just take a quick look at this one right here. Now what's nice about this shape here is it, it doesn't leave uh, much in terms of, of guesswork here. Um, now there could have been a, a horizontal reflection here, but I can't tell by looking at it, so let's just assume that there wasn't. Um, notice that vertically, the size of f of x is the same as the size of g of x. There's been no vertical stretch, but look at this. Horizontally, this goes from negative six out to six. Now that's, that's a, a distance of 12 there. But the transformed one goes from negative two to two. That's, that's just four. So this goes from 12 wide to just four wide. That is a horizontal stretch by a factor of one third, which means in the function, I'm replacing x with three x. Remember how that works. To get x by itself, I'd have to divide by three, and that's my stretch here. So this means g of x is equal to f of three x. That's the function that we're looking for there. And that really does appear to be the only transformation that's occurred. The graph of the function y equals f of x has been transformed by either a stretch or a reflection. Write the equation of the transformed graph g of x. All right, now just to remind ourselves of what's going on here, um, to go from f to g, it's been a stretch and or a reflection here. Now, take a quick look at this. Notice that it's going through, the two graphs are crossing over each other on the y-axis here. Now, that suggests that we're looking at either like a horizontal stretch, horizontal reflection here because the, the invariant point is on the y-axis, okay? Now, what I wanna do here is I wanna kinda compare this. Now, at the very least, I can tell there's been a horizontal reflection, 
okay? I can see that there's been a horizontal reflection because the graph, the orientation is different. It's okay, f of x has got a positive slope, g of x has got a negative slope. So it's been reflected over the, the y-axis here. Now what I want to do is I want to compare points to see if there's been any stretch here. Now, for example, from this point of, this invariant point, if I go one unit over, two units up, okay, to get to the corresponding point on the other graph, I go one unit back, two units up. So I'm, I'm going to go over the same horizontal distance, and I'm actually going to cover the same vertical distance. As far as I can tell, there hasn't been any stretches here. All we get is this horizontal reflection, which means I'm going to replace x with negative x. So g of x is simply going to be f of negative x. And that's it. The graph of f of x equal to x plus 2 squared plus 1 has been transformed to the graph of g of x by a vertical stretch factor. If 339 is a point on g of x, determine the value of the vertical stretch factor. All right, now this last question here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on my, my work here, whoops, sorry, so that it's, it's clear. Um, this last question here uh, is a classic one here. Um, the issue, once again, is your understanding of function notation. So I'm giving you the function right here, f of x is equal to x plus 2 squared plus 1. And you are told that we're going to create g of x by applying a vertical stretch by some factor. Now, I don't know what that is, but remember that a vertical stretch occurs as a, as a coefficient to the function. Now, what this question is really testing is whether or not you're going to do this correctly here. Because remember, the function up here, you can see it. There's two parts to it. So when I multiply a by that function, what I mean is a multiplied by the whole function, not just the first term, which is going to be the common mistake. A lot of times people will just put the a in front of this and they'll forget about that plus one and that's where we're going to get you. Okay? So the a applies to the whole thing. Now, once we've got that, that is g. Now, I don't know what a is, but that's why I've, we've given you this point here. We know that the point 3, 39 is on g. So if I plug that point in, okay, for my x and my y coordinates, now I can evaluate this and solve for a. 3 plus 2 is 5, squared is 25, plus 1 is 26. And now when I divide, 39 divided by 26 is actually 3 halves. So this has undergone, uh, this has had a vertical stretch by a factor, okay, of 3 halves. That's what they're looking for.